here is the inside of the mechanism. Uh, where I left off five years ago was I was going to lubricate everything. And that's where everything stopped. What I ended up doing back then, though, I had to rebuild the clutch on this. And as you can see, it's not, the, the, the the original clutch is nothing more than a piece of leather. Yeah, it's just that simple. But the padding in between it uh, rotted away, so this had nothing to grip on, so this spindle never turned. So that was an easy fix, just re-glued foam onto the leather, try to cut it out best I could. It does work. All right, I just got done lubricating everything. Fresh grease, cleaned and you know, the old stuff. I'm gonna put some fresh oil in the bearing. And now we're gonna put the flywheel, which is this big heavy sucker, back on. Also was able to rejuvenate the old belt. Very nice. Let's right, see how this works. Oh yeah. Got all the pieces greased and lubricated on this side. Oiled the motor. And this be ready to put back together. Well now I've recapped the uh, two, which is technically four capacitors on the amplifier board. While I'm in here, since I have to take so much of the part to get to it, the little one was bad, uh, off by 40% or so, probably affect the sound quality. The larger one was still good, but again, took me a while to dig into this and I have to disconnect everything and remove it. I saw this change while I'm in there. There's only four. That's all. So, yeah. Almost 60 years old. But we're good to go now. Put some deoxid on the record play switch right here. This is this spring loaded thing. I can't do it one hand, but you see how it pulls. So. And there. Electrically, everything is all connected back up. These all connectors just push onto these pins. The only thing I'm waiting for now is a new belt for the new mechanism. It, the old one is actually perfectly you know, round still, not cracked, but it is so stretched it just fell right off the pulley. All right, I, now I had to get a new belt for it. The old one was still in good shape, but it was stretched. And I managed to find the exact round belt replacement from this site here. And the only other thing I had to do was these uh, tires here. Um, even though I already uh, cleaned them, uh, were still uh, glazed over and slippery. Specifically, this idler tire here. Um, and usually when I clean rubber parts, uh, this will be the first attempt, uh, you know, alcohol. But no, most restorations, I just use this, and it does just fine restoring the grip. But this, I had to take a step further and take some 400 grit sandpaper to the tires. And that was able to bring back the grip on him and now this properly grips the um, pulley or properly grips the spindle on this motor because what was happening is it would work on seven and a half but any other speed it was completely slipping and the mechanism would not turn and uh, so yeah that's that's all I did and new belt uh, let's try reassembling this all right here's the mechanism all reassembled and ready to go. Okay, we got all the wiring hooked backed up except for a couple which I have to wait till I stand up. And one
one last look at the interior before we fire it up. All wiring in place. And one last look before we put this uh, front face back on it, which needs to be in place for this le uh, speed control lever to latch properly. All right, front cover is back on. Speed switch works beautifully. This needs to be powered on to properly switch speeds. Well, guys, quite some time has passed. Um, weird issues cropped up um, upon reassembly. The mechanical parts was a complete success, but upon reassembly, the first thing that happened was the audio output was very weak and full of uh, like a ground loop hum. And uh, upon playing around in here, the record play switch, uh, where my finger is pointing, it's gonna be hard to see if all this stuff in the way, but you see where it is and I got that gray stuff on there, I'll explain in a second. The little tabs on there, it, the record play switch is open and contacts are on the other side. A little metal tab sticking up, some tabs were, or contacts were loose and not making good contact. In fact, one of them actually flipped up and wasn't making contact at all. The way I fixed it was I got grabbed some plastic clamps, I put it down and I put epoxy on the other side, let it cure, and now they're securely in place once again. That's really the only way to fix that. I never fixed the record play switch issue, but then I still had, everything was working, but I had an annoying hum especially when you turn the volume up uh, it's, and it made everything sound terrible. I spent like a good, you know, on and off time, you know, I'd get frustrated and quit trying to locate this. And while I had the front cover out, I did take all the resistance measurements, make sure everything was okay. What happened was, and it was something so stupid and I'm not even sure why, but um, this cable right here is for the tone control plugs in right there on the board. In fact, you may be able to see it says tone there, yeah, see? Uh, I, what I ended up doing after getting frustrated, I uh, you know, took the nut off, pulled the volume, tone, and power switch, took it out, and it worked. I'm like, okay. Uh, I put it back in, and as soon as it made contact with the front cover, ground loop happened. But the part that doesn't make sense is this front cover is ground. The same ground as this, same ground throughout, signal ground, etc. All grounds are ground <laughs> in this. Uh, what happened, these two wires are shielded, obviously. And in fact, there's the stranded shield wire, which is, yes, connected to ground. But when it comes up here, there is no ground connection. And just the red wire and the white wire connect to the tone control. Uh, what happened, uh, there was a piece of gray electrical tape from the factory that fell off due to age. It was still on there, but it moved, okay? And this little uh, aluminum, uh, you know, wire uh, cable, what am I trying to say? Uh, this little uh, aluminum tab that is used to hold the wire in place for cable management. When putting it back in with the front, it was making contact with some strands that were cut off from the shield, causing the ground loop. So I heat trunk it, and it's not focusing too well. I'm sorry. It's hard to do this put it back in and it fixed it. And I was so upset because I, I spent like a week chasing this problem down, testing the tubes. Uh, I determined what, it, you know, the final amplifier uh, tube was fine, you know, when I pulled the preamp out. It's when the preamp was in, I had the hum in all modes, uh, even on line in. And like I said, out of frustration, because I, I was just get, giving up, I found the problem. It always seems to be the case, and it's always something stupid that's not obvious. So I don't know why it would make any difference if ground was connected or not up there. 
because it's the same connection point, but it did, and I fixed it, so. So, in addition to that, let's see, other adjustments on this. The adjustment there is for your hum control. It's connected across the heater circuit. It's been precisely dialed in for minimal or no hum. Like, I didn't hear anything when I put it in that position there only one other adjustment to be made and that was the record bias the ac bias level which is that coil there which is, is not focused there it goes see it uh you see it's actually in there a little bit now before it's pretty much flush of the top it took about three or uh, uh, it took more than that it took like several turns like five or six turns to get it correct I do have the service manual for this. And the liquid just came on. Well, there's the hum balance adjustment that's been done. Uh, bias voltage right here. I was getting about 50 volts AC when connected and I got it adjusted now for 60, so it should sound much better recording and other than that everything else kind of fell into place the motor in this is a fasco motor with a badge on it that says revere camera company which was owned by 3m at the time so there's the motor yeah, you can kind of see it where it'll say revere right there that right there, that switch is your record play equalization switch. Uh, this machine is capable of doing seven and a half, seven and a half, three and three quarter, one seven eighths, and 15 sixteenths. Yeah, it has a wide range. And we'll try experimenting with that. And uh, uh, mechanically, everything works as it should. Uh, what I actually ended up having to do was just uh, taking 400 grit sandpaper to the tires in here, and that brought the grip back. Um, that's all it really needed. Now, we'll turn this on. You can see what everything looks like from the back of the unit. So, I turn it on. And this is on the seven and a half inches per second speed. Tubes will warm up. Cooling fan draws air in that way and blows it across the motor. It's an air-cooled motor. That's the other thing I had to do. The little notice how the mo the fan blade is mounted to the unit. Um, it actually is simply a rubber grommet uh, sandwiched together between two washers with a spring clip on there. And um, the original one completely was turning to goo and it was oval shaped so it wasn't getting good grip on the fan. Uh, surprisingly, it was a common size. It slipped right on the shaft, and bam, there it goes. Nice, quiet fan running. Turn the amplifier up. No hum, but up all the way, you just get a little amplifier hiss, but that's like blasting. So no more hum. So yeah, this is what the internals look like. Um, and the problem I was having originally was any speed slower than seven and a half inches per second would cause that wheel there, which is directly coupled to the shaft on the motor to slip. And as a result, the big flywheel wouldn't turn. Now it works just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the, some switches on here. Let's go into reverse. Rewind. Oh, wait a minute. What am I? Oh, that's the tape speed. <laughs> Hard to see from the back. Here's rewind. Notice how the mechanism works. That is very strong now that I did all that. 
and also very quiet. Everything's been properly lubricated. Brakes work beautifully. Here's a uh, fast forward down here. Um, might be hard, there you can see it. Has a brand new belt on it. And uh, the tape speed uh, selection is purely mechanical. We're gonna switch. When you pull up the speed control lever, and this might be a little hard to do, one-handed right there and then I'm gonna slide it now it's on three and three quarters notice the flywheel is turning much slower now and then uh, we'll go and uh, take it down another notch yeah, I heard the little click on the speaker so the equalization switch is engaged notice how much slower the flywheel is going now that's one seven eight inches per second and one more I'm gonna face the motor it basically moves the whole motor assembly there, now it's on 15 sixteenths. Check that out. And because it changes speed of the entire flywheel, it also affects rewind and fast forward too. Like I'll go into rewind right now. Notice how much slower it goes. But it's actually good for searching for um, different uh, parts, parts of the tape. You know, you don't want to go too fast. So this machine can do everything from high fidelity music down to purely dictation. Uh, quality here. This thing runs very smooth and very quiet. I mean, it's awesome. And these Wollenzak tape recorders are tanks. You know, steel. Every, everything's metal. It, it, these are indestructible. These are these are tanks of tape recorders. Uh, for the date on it, it is on the circuit board right there. March nineteenth, nineteen sixty four. As for tubes, uh, preamp is a 12 AX7A, and the amplifier, which is uh, that guy there, my camera keeps losing focus, I apologize, um, is a 69, and the rectifier, uh, which may or may not be able to be seen, yeah, you can see it back there glowing, focus, focus, there we go, it is a 6x4 that uh, fuse label actually fell off when I got it um, so I, I re-glued it back on but that's it I don't know if the output amplifier tube is original or not um, the other two tubes are branded 3M uh, the output tube bears a general electric it could have been serviced so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the speed control uh, back on seven and a half. So it pulls up, moves the motor down. Where's, there we go. I didn't have it latched in. And now look how fast it goes. Very nice. And it'll probably get even better once I let it run for a bit. It hasn't had a good run yet. But yeah, this thing is a very well-built machine. And now we'll go ahead, I only put it in play mode too while I'm at it, which is also very solid. Uh, I don't know what else can be seen from below, but yeah, I'll try to do that right now. There, now it's in play. That reel down there should be turning, and it is. And then we'll go to stop. There you go. This is now the fan blade is securely coupled before it's kind of just like spinning on its shaft and I can easily turn it. See how I'm making the one wheel turn there and then the flywheel. Yeah, I see what happened. And the, the lever and the cord, the original cord at that, the slot for the cooling fan. Now, if you're wondering, this did have a vinyl wrap on here that was completely deteriorated. And I did buy some vinyl pat, uh, wrap from Pat Catan's that looked identical to what was on there. The problem is it was too thick. So it would like stick out above these little ledges here and it wouldn't look good, especially when you cut it. 
Um, I'll get into more on that in just a second. So you have a carrying handle here. This was still attached to it. Yeah, Qual all American quality manufacturer. And when you flip it over, it says 3M. I also like the red, white, and blue uh, string they used to attach this with. Again, all original. Woolen sack magnetic tape recorder. 3M Revere Woolen Sack Division. Has a PA monitor and record mic switch, external speaker, and then you have microphone input and a line level input for fauna and radio on the back. Um, does not have a tape counter. It doesn't have a VU meter. It has two neon lamps. For record level, you want the normal to flash with peaks, but if you get it too high, the distort lamp will flash. Um, for pause, interestingly, I'll show that later, but you see how it's sort of recessed. You just kind of, oops, see, you just kind of press it down to just enough to where it'll pause the mechanisms because when you release, it'll go back to play and record. Speed selector. Your fast forward and rewind functions. The only thing this thing did not have when I got it it was missing the screws that hold this tape head cover on, but it seems to stay firmly in place until in the meantime, until I can get one. All that's in good shape, including the pinch roller. And while this did not include any uh, take up reels when I got it, I happen to have some genuine Scotch 3M reels to put on there. So that is appropriate. And now coming to you from the dining room table and little dude Andy, we're gonna demonstrate this. The first recordings on here were recorded when I first got the unit, which still played very well. Um, just had, you know, mechanical issues on slower speeds and uh, other things, but it does sound pretty good. This is a sample, uh, period correct. Demonstrate fast forward and rewind. It's very fast. But also in good breaks too. Changes vary based on your speed selection too. Yeah, it flies on that speed. So let me go ahead to the next selection I want to show. So this is how the uh, mechanical pause will work on this. That's it. It's just, you know, you press down that little part till it's flush with the front panel. It's just a mechanical pause. Uh, this next selection will be also period correct for this unit. <laughs> commentary reel to reels are my all-time favorite uh, recording format uh, not only for the fidelity but they just look so good sexy if you will god these things are beautiful machines just looking at those reels turning and reproducing music even better when you add stuff like mechanical tape counters and VU meters bouncing, but still just look at this thing. It's beautiful, I, I love it. Anyhow, the story behind this recording here that's coming up. 
And the best thing is I can play it because it doesn't have appear any co uh, content matches. My high school had a woolen sack model T1500. That's my next reel to reel I want to get. There's a 1500 and a 1515. Did the, I had the research, see what the difference is, but let's just say for similarity purposes, that's what was in my high school AV room. And I picked the reel to reel off the shelf. And I don't think that reel to reel was part of the school's um, inventory or uh, assets. Uh, Honestly, I hate to say this, but I should have just taken it because it probably got throughout. You know, that's what happened. That's how I got my 1975 Sears hybrid tube TV. The last one, the color set, last one Sears offered out of the AV room. It belonged to a librarian who quit years ago and just sat back in the corner for decades. It was a work. I should have kept it. Uh, it's a long story, but anyhow, if it didn't belong to the school, I could have taken it. All right. Anyways, the story behind what I'm about to play is I took that reel-to-reel -reel using that Wolensack tape recorder there and dubbed it using a Caliphone tape recorder. I want to show the picture which model I used. I actually have this model. And from there, I uh, dubbed it to cassette. And then now in when I did this, it was like 2015, I dubbed it to this reel-to-reel -reel machine here just to recreate the experience. The sound quality is the same. Uh, I don't know what it's from. It sounds like it was played on, a, on some vinyl, so I don't know what it is. It does not do any content matches. And I figured it'd be a perfect thing to play. It's, it'd be still period correct. And there's also a bonus footage of me at the end from 1998 in the AV room. Oh, that's the other thing. This will act for audio playback. Copyright. It's I heard it through the grapevine instrumental, but uh, I'll let it play for a few seconds. That's what it was doing when I first got this um, dirty contacts on the record play switch. So this is back when I first got this unit, if you're wondering what's going on right now.
Watts two body. I'm way over here. That's how things were properly graded back then. And tube audio naturally is gonna be louder. I got two tape recorders. One a sharp, one a big stem. Right now, sharp is not on that one. This is one of the first things I recorded after this unit was fully restored. some also period correct music. Hope I got it up a little too high the distort lights coming on. There we go. Okay, now we're doing an inch and seven eighths, which is the same speed as a cassette, a compact cassette. This engages the equalization switch. Doesn't sound that bad, really. The seven eights back then was mainly used for um, uh, dictation and stuff, voice recording, not uh, music and fidelity. So that sounded pretty good considering. And here we go on the slowest speed, 15 sixteenths. Also, I notice it's working perfectly. Before the, I said the main uh, tire would just slip and um, wouldn't e this wouldn't even turn. Yeah, every function works beautifully on this now. Yeah, that's strictly dictation there for sure. Doesn't sound too bad, really. I mean, this, what I'm saying is like the speed is completely stable. Most other um, tape recorders, like compact cassette and anything else, you put on a slower speed, it sounds horribly fluttery and stuff. This is completely smooth. And one last test, we'll go right in with um, back to seven and a half inches per second and dub the same song. <laughs> Packaged up, ready to go. Thanks for watching and hit like and subscribe.